Okay, so in this video we're going to continue to look at um, models of linear growth and decay. So that is simple interest investments and loans and flat rate or unit cost depreciation. But what we want to do um, in this video is to look at being able to come up with a rule to describe that. Okay, we want to make this distinction between the recurrence relation and the rule. So what a recurrence relation allows us to do is to build up a sequence of numbers. Okay, so if for example, in a, working with um, a simple interest investment, if we want to know how long does it take for the investment to be worth $20,000, we have to keep recurring the recurrence relation until we get to $20,000. Okay, if we want to know what would the investment be worth after 50 years, we would have to recur the recurrence relation 50 times in order to get to 50 years. What we want to do here is be able to reformulate the problem so that it's no longer a recurrence relation and a recurrence relation is something that just tells us how to get from one term to the next term, but instead that it's a rule in terms of n. So it's a rule that enables us to substitute a value of n, n equals 50 to work out what's the value after 50 years and we immediately get the answer. And we don't need to work out the value after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way up to 49 years in order to get to 50 years. We can just go straight to 50 years. Okay, and we can do that when we just have linear growth or decay. Okay, this isn't possible all the time, that will become important later on, but it is when all we're dealing with is linear um, growth or decay. So adding on a value each year or month or whatever the time period is, or subtracting a value each time. So um, I think that's sort of summarised what's written in the first paragraph there. So let's have a look at a simple interest problem where $1,000 is invested at a rate of 8% per annum. And the recurrence relation for this situation would be um, V0 is 1,000, so that's our principal um, amount that was invested. And then to get from Vn to Vn plus 1, so to get from the value of, uh, the value in one year after the value to the value in the next year, um, we're adding on $80. And that's because $80 is 8% of $1,000. So just verified that in the case. 8% being 0 0.08 times 1,000 is $80. Okay, so we get the following sequence. So I just want to have a look at it being built up in this way. So we're starting um, after zero years at the beginning with a value of $1,000. Okay, then after one year, we take our previous year's amount and we add on $80. That's how we get to 1,080. After two years, we take also take our previous year's amount and add on $80. Okay, and this is how we've talked about it previously. Okay, that we're just adding 80 each time. And, but in the only, if we're thinking in that way, if we want to know what's happening after 25 years, we have to add 80 25 times. Okay, so what we want to think about is actually not how do we how do we look how do we get to the next value based on the previous value, but how do we calculate a value from the very first original value? Okay, so as I said, um, calculating the value after two years, we take the value after one year and we add on 80 dollars. Okay, but if we think about it, the value after one year was actually equal to the original value plus $80. Okay, So what we've actually done is if we want to get straight from here to here, what we've done is we've added on two lots of $80. Okay, So it's $1,000, the original principal value, plus two lots of $80. If we want to get straight from here to here, we've added on $80 three times. So plus 80 times three. Okay. If we want to get straight from here to here, we've added on $80, one, two, three, four times. So we've added four lots of $80, okay? Therefore, let's start to generalize that or think about that. If we want to get to the value after 10 years, it's essentially the original amount plus 10 lots of $80. So $1,000 plus 10 lots of $80, that's $800. So $1,800 is the value after 10 years. If we want to get straight from V0 to V25, we can see that we've taken our original amount, $1,000, plus we've added on 25 lots of $80. We've added on 80 25 times. Okay, so I'll get my cast to work that out for me. 1,000 plus 25 times 80, it's going to be 3,000. So if we generalize that then to get um, to the nth term, we're taking our original value, which was $1,000, and we're adding on n lots of $80, okay? Which, let's generalize it even further, that would be the same as saying it's V0, the original value, plus 80n. Okay, so therefore, 
we can generalize this by saying that if our recurrence relation was this, we add or subtract on an amount every, every time, we can generalize that into a rule. We're going, the value after n years is the original value, the principal value, b0, plus n lots of d, or minus n lots of d, if we're, um, we have decay, so if we have um, depreciation. Um, I've also left, sorry, v0 out of the recurrence relation. Make sure the recurrence relation always has two parts, v0 and vn. Uh, sorry, v0 and vn plus 1. Um, so what we have here is it's not the rule for vn, the value, the rule for vn doesn't depend on vn minus 1. It doesn't depend on the previous value. It depends on the original value and knowing n. And so this means it allows us to go straight from V0 to V 206 if we want. Okay. All right, so let's have a look at some problems. So the following recurrence relation can be used to model the depreciation of a car with a purchase price of $42,000 and an annual depreciation of 10.5%. Now, again, I apologize as part of the recurrence relation missing here. We should also, there's always two parts to it should also have V0 is $42,000 and VN plus 1 is VN minus 4,410. So every, what's N being measured in? Annual depreciation. So every year um, we are subtracting $4,410. So we're depreciating by 4,410. State the value of the car after one, two and three years. Okay, so we want V1, we want V2 and we want V3. So I'm just going to get my recurrence relation happening with my CAS. So 42,000, press enter. And then we want to subtract 4410, so that's after one year, $37,590. Press enter again, after two years, $33,180. Enter again, after three years, $28,770. Find the rule for VN to describe the value of the car after N years. Okay, so the value of the car after N years is going to be the original value, which in this case is 42,000 minus 4,410 times n. Okay, We multiply 4,410 by n, that's the total amount that's going to be subtracted over a period of n years. So then we want to calculate the value of the car after six years, so that is v6. So we don't need to use our recurrence relation to get to 6. Okay, we could. We've got V3, 4, 5, 6, because I have got it started. We would expect it to be that. So let's check that our rule works then. So 42,000 minus $4,410 times 6. So we're subtracting $4,410 6 times. Um, and so let's just check that that gives us the same answer our recurrence relation did. 42,000 minus 4410 times 6 is indeed the same as what we got with the recurrence relation. So $15,540. After how many years will the value of the car be less than half of its original value? Okay, so this time we can solve an equation. Rather than having to keep recurring until it gets to less than 21,000, although we've actually already got past that point here, we can now solve. So we want to know when is the value uh, less than 21,000, which is half. Okay. So therefore we want in our rule, here's our rule here in part B, we now want the value to be 21,000 and work out what will N be when the value is 21,000. Okay. So the equation we're solving here is we're making the value equal 21,000 and we know that the value is described by 42,000 minus 4410N, and we can get our CAS to solve that equation for N. So solve 21,000 equals 42,000 minus 4410 times N, comma N to solve for N. Oops, control enter. Okay, so it will tell me that N is about 4.76. Okay, so you need to decide whether you round up to 5 or down to 4 and you should always be rounding up because we want the value of the car to be less than half. So even if this was 4.12 we would round up to 5 because if we looked at finding what's the value after 4 years be 42,000 minus 4410 times 4 it's still a bit more than 21,000. Okay, and that would be true even if this number rounded this number was less than 4.5. Okay, 
Um, and then if I look at what happens as after five years, that's the first year that the value will actually be less than um, 21,000. So therefore, it's going to be after five years. So make sure you answer the question. Um, it will take five years for the value to first be less than 21,000, which is less than half of the original value. Um, I'm not going to go into that. I think if you are a student that also does methods, uh, making use of defining functions could be a helpful or efficient thing to do on occasion. But to be honest, um, in further maths, it's actually not really that necessary. And so I'm not going to touch on that. It's um, beyond the scope of what um, a straight further student needs to understand. Um, example two, the value of an investment um, after n years, Vn, can be calculated from the rule Vn equals 4,200 plus 357n. How much was initially invested? Okay, so we essentially want to know what V0 is. We should be able to see it in the rule, but you can your rule will work if you substitute in n equals 0, it's 357 times 0, and so it's just $4,200. If you understand where the rules come from, you should be able to tell that that's your initial value. By what dollar amount does the investment increase each year? So we add on 357 times the number of years. So every year, for example, if it was after one year, we would have added on $357. So we can see that in the rule as well. As I said, you could use the rule, you could work out V1 and then work out how much was added on, but you really should be able to see and understand in the formula that that's what you're adding on each year. What is the rate of simple interest? Okay, so we want to know, that's our um, annual interest, that's our principal value, so we want to know what percentage is 357 out of 4,200, multiplied by 100% to change it to a percentage, so 357 divided by 4,200 times it by 100, control enter, so it's 8.5% increase per year. $357 is 8.5% of 4200 dollars Find the value of the investment after eight years. Okay, so we've got our formula that lets us go straight to eight years. We don't need to um, use the recurrence relation. So value after eight years, we're just substituting n equals eight into our formula. So 40, uh, 4200 plus 357 times eight. So over the course of eight years, we've started with our principal amount and we've added on $357 eight times and we have at this point $7,056. After how many years will the value of the investment exceed $20,000? So again let's try this by making solving an equation. So let's make sorry let's make the value $20,000 and solve the equation to find what n is. Okay so we're going to have $20,000 is equal to $4,200 plus 357n, we're going to get our cas to solve that for n, 20,000 equals 4,200 plus 357 times n, comma n to solve for n, oops, control enter, so we find that n is approximately 44.26. Now if you were to just round that to the nearest whole number it would be 44. But let's substitute 44 back into our equation. So 4,200 plus 357 times 44. Um, we're not quite past $20,000 if we round down to 44 years. So therefore we need to round, always need to round up in these cases. But I want you to be careful about just thinking I always round up and forgetting why or what's happening. So think clearly about what it is that you need and why, which way you need to round. So in this case, we would need to round up to 45 years to make sure that the value exceeds $20,000. Okay. So therefore, after 45 years. Okay. Example three. Final example for this video. Um, a photocopier is purchased for $8,600 and depreciates at a rate of $0.22 cents for every 100 copies made. Write down the rule for the value Vn of the photocopier after n lots of 100 copies have been made. Okay, so our value after n lots of 100 copies will be the original value, 8600 minus we're losing $0.22, cents, 0.22 for every n where n is 100 copies. Okay. In the first year of use, 400,000 copies are made 
and in the second year 4,800 copies are made. Find the depreciation in the first year. Okay, so in the first year is V0 to V1. It's really important that we understand that, okay? So we know that in the first year of use, there were 400,000 copies made, okay? So 400,000 copies means, let's divide that by 100, means that N is 4,000, okay? 4,000 times 100, because um, N is per 100 copies, um, would be 400,000 copies. Okay, so we're looking at when N, we know that over the course of the first year, N equals 4,000. So we can work out um, value after 4,000, which is the first year. Sorry, value after 4,000 lots of 100 copies. So that's 8,600 minus 0.22 times 4,000. 8,600 minus, I'm sorry, I'm going to delete that V0 to V1 because it's not V0 to V1. In this case, it's V0 to V after one year, which is V4,000, okay? Um, because N is not counting in years, it's counting in copies. We're looking at unit cost depreciation here. All right, sorry, we're calculating this. So 0.22 times 4,000. Okay, so in the first year, um, Ah, now let's be careful here. I've worked out the value. I could have done this differently. I've worked out the value, the value of the copier at the end of the first year. Okay, so that means that the depreciation in the first year is um, the difference between the value at the beginning. Sorry, I've, cut, I've typed in. Sorry, I've typed in eighty-six thousand instead of eight thousand six hundred. Let me just fix my calculation. Okay, so sorry. 8,600, the value after 4,000 lots of 100 copies, so that's 400,000 copies, is $7,720, okay? So the depreciation, the value went from being 8,600. So in fact, what we're actually interested in is this bit here, what, what we subtracted from 8,600. That's the depreciation. So just the 0.22 times 4,000, $880. And you would get that same amount, but if you had just done your 8,600 minus your 7,720, okay? Because that's this is what you subtracted away. So the depreciation in the first year is $880. Um, find the value of the photocopy at the end of the second year. Okay, so 400,000 copies are made in the first year, and in the second year, 400, 480,000 copies, okay? So we know that there's 880,000 copies in first two years. Okay, so 880,000, let's divide that by 100, should be 8,800. So this means we want to know at the end of two years, it is when N equals 8,800. Okay, so uh, we want to know the value of the copier when N is 8,800. So that is, sorry, 8,600 minus 0.22 times 8,800. So 8600 minus 0.22 times 8800, which is um, N when the number of copies is 880,000. And so the value at the end of the second year is $6,664. Okay, so the work today is from exercise 8D.